Hi boys and girls. I'm glad to see you here in the story corner this morning. Well, our story this morning, you will remember last week we left off where um, God had uh, saved Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from the fiery furnace. Well, after that, King Nebuchadnezzar for sure knew who the true God was, didn't he? Yes. And you know what? King Nebuchadnezzar tried to uh, remember God, and he did for, for a long time. He remembered that um, God was uh, the true God, and, and he was obedient and worshipped him. But then, as time went on, why, he became kind of proud again. And he began to think how important he was. Remember last week with the image, that's why he'd made it all out of gold. Because he knew that the gold head in his dream had represented him. And so he thought if he made an image all out of gold, that would be really, that would make him look really important. Well, he was trying to be more humble. But as time went on, he started thinking how good he was. And he realized that he, he um, had a beautiful kingdom and that he was pretty important. But you know what? God began to notice that. And God sent him a dream. Seems like God had sent him a dream before, right? Yes. Well, God sent him another dream to warn him that he needed to be careful and remember God. And God sent him a dream about a big, beautiful tree. And it had beautiful fruit on it and branches and leaves. And how the animals came to that tree and used it for shade. And how the birds built their nests in it and felt safe and protected. And then in his dream, why, someone commanded that the tree be cut down. And all that was left was just the stump. And this bothered King Nebuchadnezzar because he didn't know what this dream meant. But it was a pretty strange dream. Well, you know what? Nebuchadnezzar got up and who do you think he called in to help him with his dream? Oh dear. He called those wise men in again. Those wise men that didn't worship God and that worshipped idols. Do you think those wise men could help him any more than they could the first time he had the dream a long t quite a while ago? No, they couldn't. And so finally Nebuchadnezzar remembered Daniel and he called Daniel in. And he told Daniel about his dream. And Daniel listened and he knew that it didn't that what it meant was not good. And he was a little hesitant to tell the king, but the king encouraged him to go ahead and, and tell him because he knew that Daniel served the true God and that what Daniel said would be the truth. And so Daniel went ahead and told him that the tree represented King Nebuchadnezzar and his great kingdom and how he um, controlled so much of the world and how people looked to him for help. Just like in the dream, the animals and the birds looked to the tree for help and shade and protection. But he said, King, God is trying to tell you that you need to honor him and you need to remember him. And you need to put away your pride and your selfish, sinful ways. And then maybe God won't bring the terrible things on you. But if you don't do this, then the part about cutting the tree down. That's what's going to happen to you, O oh king. God is going to cut you down, and you won't be king anymore. And so Daniel wanted to warn him. Well, King Nebuchadnezzar thought about that, and he thought, well, maybe I should, maybe I should try to remember God more. And so he did try for a while. But as he looked around and seen his great kingdom and how special he was, he kind of forgot about God. And then... I looked out over the city and said to myself, What a beautiful sight. I'm the one who built this magnificent city. I'm the one who put this nation on its feet and made it into a great empire. It was my intelligence 
and power that did all this. No one else's. This great Babylon will stand as a monument to me forever. As soon as he said those words, a voice from heaven said, King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken. The kingdom has departed from you. Right away, God took away his wisdom and his ability to think and to choose what to do. Of course, he couldn't be king anymore if he couldn't think and he couldn't make choices. And so his servants had to let him live out in the fields like the animals. And King Nebuchadnezzar lived out in the 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 fields and he ate grass just like the oxen did for seven years he didn't know what he was doing and the other rulers in his kingdom took care of everything in his kingdom well at the end of seven years just like his dream had said why God allowed King Nebuchadnezzar to be able to think again and his mind became clear and he realized what was going on around him and when his the other rulers in his kingdom realized that he had came back to his mind and that he was um, able to think and make choices why he was able to come back and be king over his kingdom again well what do you think Nebuchadnezzar thought now do you think he was still the same proud king he was that thought he was so important no you know what he fell down on his knees and he thanked God for letting him come back to rule his kingdom and he gave God the glory and he remembered from that time on that it was God that had made him king of this great nation and it was God that had allowed him to do all the great things he had done. And you know what? He told everyone about it. He even wrote a letter. And that letter is recorded in our Bibles in the book of Daniel. And it says, So now I, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, praise and honor the God of heaven and glorify the king of kings, whose ways are right and just towards everyone but who also humbles those who are lifted up by pride and power. Yes, so King Nebuchadnezzar had finally learned that he needed God in his life and that he needed to trust God. Well, you know, some years went by and King Nebuchadnezzar's grandson was now king of Babylon. Okay, so we're about to hear about something that happened while King Nebuchadnezzar's grandson was king, and his grandson's name was Belshazzar, King Belshazzar. Well, you know what? There's something very sad about this story. Even though King Belshazzar knew all about his grandfather's story, how he had had the dream about the image, and how he had um, had the dream about the tree, and how his grandfather had actually went out and um, been, uh, had to live like the, live like the cattle for seven years. Belshazzar knew all those stories. So you would think that King Belshazzar would want to trust God, wouldn't you? But that's the sad part of our story. King Belshazzar didn't care anything about God, and he just wanted to do his own thing and have his own way, and he liked to have parties and worship the idols of their kingdom. And one day, why King Belshazzar was there, and he was enjoying one of his parties with all his important people in the kingdom, 
and something happened. They had, you remember a long time ago, the king had uh, taken, King Nebuchadnezzar had went to, and he had taken all the uh, special uh, gold uh, goblets and, and different things out of the temple, out of God's temple, and they had been kept there in um, the the storerooms of the palace there with uh, King Nebuchadnezzar and through um, the years. And so this night at this party, why King Belshazzar thought that it would be it would be great fun to bring out those special gold things that were only supposed to be used in God's house. And they were glorifying their idols, and they were making fun of the God of heaven. And as they were there having this party, all of a sudden someone in the crowd pointed, and he pointed to the wall, and there were words. There was a hand with no body writing words on the wall. Do you think that everyone stopped and paid attention then? Oh, you bet they did. And the king was very, very concerned. King Belshazzar, because he was very concerned about these words that were just being wrote on the wall by this hand that um, they didn't know what it was. And um, so he began calling. Oh, you know what he did. He called those same wise men that didn't know anything about any of the other dreams. And he asked them to tell him what, tell everyone what the meaning of the writing was. And they couldn't tell because they're still worshiping their idols. And they don't know what the meaning of this is. Well, you know what? The queen, she remembered Daniel. And she came and she told King Belshazzar, There is a man that was able to help your grandfather and you should call him. And so King Nebuchadnezzar did. He called in Daniel. And Daniel came in. And the king promised to make Daniel, promised to make anyone that could tell him what these words meant very important in the kingdom. You know, Daniel said, I don't need all those things, but I will tell you what these words mean. And he told King Nebuchadnezzar, he says, you have not been worshiping the God of heaven. You have not been being respectful as your grandfather Nebuchadnezzar learned. And But then he went ahead and he told him what the words meant. Let's listen and hear what they meant. The words are, many, many, tekel, eupharsin. The first word, many, that God has numbered the days of your kingdom and decided to bring it to an end. The same word is given twice to let you know the certainty of it. The second word, tekel, means that you have been weighed in the scales of heaven and found lacking in moral character, the moral character you should have. The third word, euphorson, means the kingdom will be divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. That very night, the kingdom of Medio persia captured the city of Babylon. King Belshazzar was killed, and the kingdom of Babylon was finished, just as God had told Nebuchadnezzar in his dream. Babylon did not last forever. Did everything happen just as God said? Yes, it did, boys and girls. And this story reminds us that God can be trusted, that things happen just as God says they will. And we want to remember that we don't want to take as long as King Nebuchadnezzar did to fully trust in God. We don't want to have to go out and eat grass for seven years, do we? No. We want to trust Jesus and remember that what he says is true. Okay, let's say our memory verse. Have you been learning your memory verse? Okay, let's say it together. We shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Each of us shall give account of himself to God. 
Romans 14, 10 through 12. Okay, let's sing our goodbye song. Close your eyes and fold your hands for our goodbye prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for the stories that you give us in the Bible that we can learn from them. And may we remember that we want to trust you each and every day and that we don't want to take as long as King Nebuchadnezzar did. We want to trust you now while we're still, while we're still young. And Jesus, we ask you to uh, bless each one of us this coming week. Keep us safe. Provide us with the things that we need and draw us close to you in your love, Jesus. Bring us back to Sabbath school wherever we are at next Sabbath. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Bye-bye, boys and girls. Have a good week.